I really wanted to first and foremost increase their motivation, increase their interest, so um, their activity and fitness level would be increased. The next benefit to these circuits is it is conducive to small or large class sizes. Um, I teach very large class sizes. As Tabor said earlier, I'm at one of the largest schools in Arizona. So my class sizes are about anywhere from 50 to 60 students per class. So I wanted to design something that would be conducive to that, and these circuits definitely do that. But it also is very easily um, to work with small class sizes as well. Um, they're easy to manage, student behavior and correct technique, because these, once you see a common thread with these circuits as we go through this PowerPoint, you'll see that it just, they run themselves. The students know how to rotate and um, it flows very well and I am able, or you, as the PE teacher, are able to walk around, manage student behavior, correct technique, it's, it's uh, designed specifically for that. Another point is any equipment fits into the circuit design. So what I want you to get out of this webinar today is the design format, the how you set it up. Any equipment will work. You can use the um, UltraFit Circuit Pro equipment. You can use equipment that's in your storage room. Um, but change it up once in a while. Keep it interesting. My favorite part of these circuits is there's absolutely no downtime, no waiting. That's, that's the big thing as PE teachers. We don't want the kids wasting class period time, you know, waiting in line or waiting to switch, and there's no movement, no movement, no cardiovascular um, endurance. So we really want to keep them hustling. Uh, another point, stations, uh, I like to keep them challenging to increase their activity and fitness levels. Uh, set the bar kind of high. Make them work for it. I, I find that if you challenge them a little bit, they, they tend to stay interested as well. Um, if it's too easy or too light of equipment, they tend to, you know, be put off a little bit and start to get bored. Uh, my favorite part of these circuits, again, is it allows for students to work together. It's not me running the show. It's, it's them allowing them to work together. And they're being pushed by their peers, and you'll see that as, as you see the live video of my students doing it, um, which enables you to focus on other things. Some tips to uh, kicking off these circuits is you want to make sure you utilize the majority of the space in the gym or our outdoor area. Like I said before, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a gym, you want to use all of the space that you have for you. You don't want to just set up around in the perimeter and then the middle of the gym isn't being used and there's a lot of cardio that can be done um, with setting up the design like that. And you don't have to have a gym space to do these circuits. You, you are more than welcome to go outside and, and use an outdoor space. You just have to have a couple cones to mark out your area and you're good to go. You can use any locomotor movements in between stations. You don't always have to do the jogging. Uh, you'll see my students doing grapevines and slides and high knees. So there's lots of things that you can, can put in between station to station. The circuits should be designed with no wait times, as I said earlier. Make sure that um, you properly choose the exercises and the number of reps to allow for no wait time area, and we'll get into that more later. You want to make, make each station challenging, powerful, and explosive so they get m the most out of each station. Okay, so at the end of your lesson, you know you've really worked them pretty good and they've, they've burned lots of calories and got muscular endurance and, and muscular strength going, so it's all there. Um, another tip, you want to utilize your equipment in a variety of ways. Don't just always pull out the kettlebell and do you know, a kettlebell swing every time. There's many different ways to use the same piece of equipment. So look in your storage room, see what you have, um, use it in, in many, many different ways. Uh, and I sometimes even I make up uh, an exercise with a different piece of equipment just to kind of mix it up and keep their interest going. You also want to provide modifications to fit the needs of all your students with the different fitness levels and abilities that they may have. Um, for example, if you have a really fit student who's at the same station with someone who's just starting out, you want to have maybe two or three different weights of a medicine ball. You might want to have a four pound, a six pound, and an eight pound, and then that way they know which one they, they need to take to challenge themselves. Um, so so kind of keep that in mind when you're setting it up. And you want to design circuits to incorporate 
cardiovascular endurance, muscular strength and, and endurance, and core work. So every, all the circuits that I do, I try to do a total body workout so they're going to get more bang for their buck. When they go in, they're getting everything. Um, obviously, cardiovascular endurance when they're changing from station to station make the equipment pr pretty challenging and heavy for them so they get their muscular strength. And by going through these circuits over and over, they're going to get their endurance. And then I also like to always incorporate some core work as the foundation. All right, well, let's move on. Hope I'm not going too fast for you. Um, here's a, an attendee participation, a live poll here. So take a look at the question. I believe you have about 45 seconds to answer it um, on the right side of your screen there. The question is, uh, do you currently incorporate fitness into your PE class? And you want to choose one. So go ahead and do that now. It looks like you have about... 40 seconds left. All right, here we go. Uh, looks like, oh, I can't see it here. It looks like 60% um, of the people, 96 out of 143 people said yes, they do in corporate fitness. 3% uh, no, but I, I keep meaning to start, which is good. And nobody check that um, I don't think fitness belongs in PE, which which is a good thing. I'm glad, I'm glad to see that. Um, fitness always has a place in, in any PE curriculum at any level, so that's good. So it looks like the majority of you, over 60% over chose yes, you do currently use fitness in PE, so that's good. So let's go on and see how we can get it in there even more using these circuits. Uh, there's four main circuits that we're going to talk about, the X Factor, the Zigzag, rep and run and cardio kickboxing. And if you look at the picture here, those are the resource cards that Tabor was talking about previously. Um, those are really handy. They're nice, laminated. They're small enough to stick in your grade book or stick in your back pocket. And it has the diagrams of everything that I'm going to talk about today. It's got some um, tips on how to set everything up and what each station is and um, some teaching tips as well. So let's go into the X factor. There is the diagram. And this is right off one of the cards there. And you, it, you can see that there's your gym space, and <laughs> it's all over the place. Kids are running everywhere. Wherever you see that red arrow, that's where they're jogging from station to station. And by making it kind of intricate and tricky from going from, if you look up in the upper right-hand corner, you start at station one and you cut it across diagonally to station two, they're really focused on where they're moving to next and following their peers and, and trying to figure out where to go. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of this design is that um, they're always thinking and they're always moving and they're looking ahead and um, it, it's interesting. It's almost like a like a scavenger hunt or an obstacle course, if, if you will. So take a look at that. You'll get to see my students doing it in just a second here. Um, you, like I said, you can use a wide variety of equipment. The main thing when designing this X factor is you first want to make the X. That's where the X factor comes from. As you can see here, there, we're using um, agility ladders to go one part of the X and then poly spots to cross the X. And once you have that X, then it flows pretty easily. Um, so that, again, is also on the resource card. Here, should be coming up here in a second, is video. So here are my little students doing the X Factor. As you see, they go from station one is the agility ladder going across, and then they jog to station two and do a, an exercise. There they go. They're crossing in the middle. Oh, see, they got to watch, <laughs> keep their heads up, which keeps them eyes open, keeps them alert. And there's a, how I run it is there's absolutely no walking from station to station. And there really isn't room for walking because you're constantly doing a locomotor movement in between the stations. So there they are. Um, and you see how as they're going through, they're not getting pushed by anybody but their peers. So someone's behind you, and you know there's someone behind you going. you got to move. you got to get to that next station. There they go, jogging to, I believe, that station four. And that's pretty much it. So you saw them just moving, utilizing the gym space. Nobody was sitting around. Let's go on to um, the X Factor tips really quick here. 
you want to, this is really, really important. So you want to set the reps for each station approximately 10 to 15 reps depending on the exercise. You don't want to go any more than that because then they're just stuck at that station a little bit too long. You want to make sure each station takes about the same amount of time to execute the designated number of reps to alleviate no wait time. So if you're having them do jump rope, at one station, you're having them do kettlebell swings at another, time it out. Make sure that the number of reps matches the time it takes for them to do that. Because if you have one station that takes too long, uh, it's going to get backed up. So that's the, the main thing you want to consider uh, when you're designing this circuit. You can use any equipment you have for each station. Uh, you can even use body weight exercises. You don't have to use equipment at every one. Maybe you want to do push-ups or sit-ups. That works as well. Place a cone at each station with the station number and exercise directions. With the, um, you know, the gopher package you get with the UltraFit Circuit Pro, it comes with all of that. You get the station signs, you get the, um, the cones with the numbers on it and the directions, and that, that's great. That's, talk about pushing the easy button. If you, if you want to just order that, that's awesome. Again, I'm not a salesperson for gopher. I'm just saying it's just a nice, easy package to get everything in one. If not, you just have to make sure you put some directional numbers on each station. You want to evenly disperse your students throughout the circuit at the beginning, at the beginning of class, um, so you don't all start at the same spot, obviously. So for a class of 40 or more, uh, you want to have no more than five to eight students per station to start. All right, so I think that wraps up the X factor. Let's go on to zigzag. It's similar. You're still using the majority of the space in your gym, uh, still eight stations, but again, it just looks a little bit different just to keep them intrigued enough to, to be interested and keep moving. Um, so you're just zigzagging in between the circuits. Um, you start at station one and you go to two, crossing, and you go to three, cross back, and you can put any exercises you want there. Um, so I'll give you, a, give you a couple seconds to look at that. And how you get from station four to five, notice that you keep the, um, the hurdles there. So they hurdle over them. You can put agility ladders. You can have them slide, jog. If you don't have that agility equipment, you can have them do any local motor movement to get from four to five and from station eight to one. All right, let's go on. Here is uh, the video is going to go ahead and load up again. You can watch the students doing that. So here's them doing the zigzag, jogging in between. And, you know, and I have people ask me a lot, well, how do you get them to jog in between? What if, what if they don't? What if they walk? And, and you know, that just comes from you motivating them at the beginning of the school year, what you'll allow, what you won't allow, and really keeping them motivated. I'm walking around. I place myself right in the middle of that gym to where, you know, if they start to kind of walk a little bit, I just kind of scoot them along, say, come on, keep going. Just keep motivating, keep pumping them up giving them praise, you got this, keep going. And like I said earlier, one of my rules is there's no walking once we start class, there's no walking in my gym. And they know that. So you see them jogging in between there. They get lost a little bit. We, we've only done this once before I videoed this. So this is new for them. And it'll take your students a couple times to get it, to get the format. But once they get it, it just runs itself. So as you see on that back wall there, there's eight stations. Each station has the same equipment. Those are 25-pound weight plates that the students are lifting up over their head. Probably not the best technique you saw there at the end. So I like to place myself um, at the station where I know technique is going to be the weakest. And then here's a couple tips for the zigzag. You want to set four cones evenly on each baseline and then four cones directly across um, on the opposite baseline. Uh, you may place agility hurdles, ladders, in between stations four and five and eight and one, as I stated earlier. You don't want to allow the students to walk in between the stations. We already talked about that. And then keep all the equipment inside the basketball court or designated areas free from the agility ladders or hurdles because that's where they're, they're running. So you don't want them to trip up on, on a dumbbell or, or a medicine ball. So keep everything tucked inside the basketball court. All right, let's get to rep and run. Um, this can be executed a couple different ways. Um, it's, let's see, another eight stations here going around in the circle. We're not use, utilizing the middle of the gym this time, 
but the students have the opportunity to work with each other. So for example, I have a partner, that one partner is going to jog around the gym a couple times while I do the exercise at station one. When they come back, they're going to do the exercise at station one while they jog around. And we continue to flow through this circuit with that format. So there's a lot of cardiovascular uh, activity going on as well as muscular strength and endurance. Um, the students really like this one because they get to work with a friend. You know, obviously, if if they're pro productive, let them let them choose their partner. If if not, you know, sometimes once in a while I'll have to split them up and have them work out with somebody else. But this is a one way to do it. Um, as we get in this, I'll talk about another way you can execute the rep and run. So um, I'm going to actually load up this video here so you can see my students doing this. Yep, here we go. So what you're seeing is the second way um, that I talked about on how to execute this. We got the students staying at the station, doing the exercise while their partner is jogging. And then when they get back, they will execute that, that exercise. On the diagram that you saw on this webinar, um, that's the variation of rotating from station to station. So once your partner gets back and you both have done that exercise, say at the yellow cone, you go ahead and advance to the purple cone, go ahead and advance to the orange cone. And that's what the Circuit Pro cards are designed for through Gopher. And it's, it just really keeps them engaged, keeps them motivated. All the instructions are on the cards. You can see right there what exercise is supposed to be executed, what equipment they're supposed to use. It even shows them in the upper right-hand corner on the card what muscles they're using for that exercise, which is nice. So um, the cones, if you see right there, the cones are um, come with the circuit pack, and they have that little cut in the top where the cards fit nicely right in there. All right, and here are some tips. You want to have your students partner up and choose any station to make it their home base. Each station has the same sign placed on the cone with approximately 10 to 15 exercises listed. Uh, that takes a class period of about 35 to 40 minutes. Um, you want to place the cones in a circle outside the basketball, or sorry, inside the basketball court so you can allow for space for them to jog around, make a little lap area. Each station should have the same equipment. Try to limit the equipment to more than, no more than three items. So on the lesson that you just saw, we used a mat, um, a fitness bar, and a medicine ball. Too much uh, equipment, you just have too much going on. It gets a little chaotic in there, so keep keep it a minimum to three or less, I, I would suggest. One partner jogs two laps while the other partner performs the first exercise on the sign, and then just go ahead and repeat that. Um, you just want to complete that process until all the exercises are done. Well, there's rep and run. Cardio kickboxing, probably one of the favorites with my students. I just did this yesterday with them, and I'm telling you firsthand that they were drenched in sweat. Not one person didn't have a smile on their face. They were having a ball. Um, one of the biggest questions I get asked is, well, do people get out of hand sometimes and get hurt? Do they accidentally punch each other in the face? And I've been doing cardio kickboxing for about 16 years here at Mesa High, and I've never, knock on wood, I'm knocking on wood right now, um, I've never had anybody get hit, get hurt. Um, you know, if anything, I have to get them to punch harder. You know, they got the mitts, they got the gloves, just go ahead and hit a little bit harder. So it's safe. You really have to, and we'll go through some tips with this, but you really have to monitor it and set the tone of safety and, you know, what you'll tolerate and what you won't. But um, you get all this equipment with you. You get jump ropes and sparring mitts and gloves and um, the kickboxing pads the cones, signs, so it's, it's really cool. They love this kickboxing unit. So let's go ahead and look at the video. Here's the kids. So how it executes is you have um, one partner doing the boxing, one partner is doing the sparring. They have the sparring mitts on, so they're kind of like I say, you're the trainer. You're their trainer for this. And they go through 
and complete all eight stations. I keep them there about 40 seconds before I rotate. I use an interval clock. And uh, here they go. So they're rotating. Uh, actually, this, this particular one with my advanced students, instead of just rotating to the next station, I have them jog all the way around and then go ahead and advance to the next station. Once the boxers have gone all the way through all eight stations, then I have them switch gloves. So now you're the trainer and your partner now gets to box. So again, make sure they get through all eight stations before you have them switch gloves. I do not have them switch gloves at every station. That would take way too long. Um, if you want to have them jog in between each station, great. If not, if it's a little bit too challenging for them, take that out. Um, you can incorporate jump roping into the stations. Um, lots of different things you can do here with that. I don't introduce kickboxing, actually kicking, until they get the boxing part down first, until they get used to that. Uh, here's some tips, tips of the trade here. You want to teach proper kickboxing and boxing techniques and behavior and safety rules before you allow your students to participate in a circuit. You really want to set the precedence that, hey, you know, don't lock out your elbow on each hit. You're going to hyperextend your elbow. Kind of teach them how to do a jab, how to do a cross. There's only about four basic punches that they'll be executing. So go over that first. Talk about the safety. You know, hey, if you if you can't handle this and you're getting out of control, you're going to be asked to, to sit out. Um, you just you really want to make sure you have a good pulse on your students and if this is something that they can handle. Like I said, I've never had an issue with my students, but that's something you got to watch for. Uh, have your students choose a partner. One's the boxer. One will be the sparring partner. I like them to ha choose someone at their kind of their same ability. You know, they they like to choose their friends, and that's fine. But if I I have co-ed classes, so I make the boys um, box with each other. Sometimes the boys get really into this and punch a little bit harder than the girls, and um, you know I don't want anybody to get hurt, so I'll pair up the boys together. You want to set up the circuit using cones and signs in a circle around the perimeter. And um, like I said earlier, set the interval clock at 45 to 60 seconds. That's boxing time with a 15-second rest change interval. Um, the 15 seconds, that was plenty of time for my students to jog a lap and get to the next station. Uh, but you can certainly just have them rotate without the jog. Uh, once you complete all the stations, then you switch gloves and go. Uh, you want to disinfect the gloves with uh, disinfectant wipes. Gopher even sells those wipes in their catalog. They're really easy. You can have a few of those out. They can pull them right out of the, the little container and wipe the gloves down. And I've never, like I said, 16 years, I've never had an issue with any kind of um, fungus or rash or anything. So as long as they clean them, you're, you're good to go with that. Again, one of the favorites here. Here's a, another five pole. Which circuits most interest you? You want to choose one or many of them. So there's the X Factor, the zigzag, the rep and run, cardio. Do you do all four? So look to your right there. Go ahead and choose one or many. Which ones do you think you might be interested in doing? All right, it looks like, um, well, the majority of you chose all four. It looks like 30% or so chose all four as your favorite. And it looks like the next favorite one was the X Factor and then the Rep and Run. And it looks like Zigzag in, looks like, yeah, Zigzag came in last. <laughs> and that's funny because that's my favorite. <laughs> I love the Zigzag one. So there it is for you. Um, and it, nobody chose that they're not interested in any of them. So thank you for that. I was a little nervous <laughs> that you would choose you didn't like any of them. That would be a blow to my ego. Um, well, that's that's it for me. I, I really uh, appreciate you guys taking the time to learn a little bit of more, a little bit more about learning these circuits. I hope this was uh, beneficial to you and. Um, and good luck to you. I hope you incorporate some of these circuits into your curriculum. And thanks so much. If, again, if you need any clarification, go ahead and shoot me an email. Hope you thanks, guys Maria. Have a great school year. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we've got a few questions here, so um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of them. One of the questions we had was, 
uh, about station music um, that's timed for stations. Um, Maria, what have you done with your stations from a music standpoint, and how have you incorporated music into the stations? Well, for all of them except for the kickboxing, I just have continuous music going because these circuits are continuous. So okay. um, I get my music, um, you know, from iTunes. I make sure that the music is clean, but it is continuous. I don't start and stop it. The cardio kickboxing, I do start and stop the music. Okay. And I like to use high-energy power music to, to just get them up and pumped up. Okay. Um, another question we had was, what grade level do you recommend starting uh, this type of activity or this type of a circuit? Um, they're pretty tricky. Uh, so I would say it's obviously K through 12. Elementary, I have a lot of elementary teachers that use these circuits and love them. Um, but I would probably start at probably third or fourth grade. There's okay. a lot of movement and, you know, maybe third or fourth grade would be where I would start. And do you do any specific um, equipment modifications for those younger grades? Yeah, if you are if you're looking at this last slide here, if you look at the equipment to the far left, those kettlebell their kettle balls with the handle, you can get those really light. Basically, it feels like a playground ball with a handle, and that mm -hmm. would get the younger students used to using a kettlebell, but having it safe and soft, and they can't hurt themselves. Just just to get them to get the technique down first. Sure. So yeah, you can use playground balls, you can use basketballs. Anything that emulates the exercise without being too, too heavy as you start out younger. Okay. And another question similar to that, the instructional cards, um, are, they, uh, are, they, are they done in a way that they would also, I assume, would transfer over into those grades that you mentioned, third grade and up? Yeah, I believe all the, the levels are on there, how to implement, yep. the, implement the different equipment based on your grade level. Sure. So... Good. Yeah, when I present um, these circuits, it's I'm always amazed by how many elementary people do do these. They were yeah. a, originally designed for secondary, but just by changing the equipment, the format will work for any level. Yep. And another thing, uh, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, one of the circuits equipment packs that came out of um, Maria's initial idea for these these stations and these circuits is the Class Plus Intro Fit Circuit Pack, which is specifically designed for younger kids, um, introducing a lot of these different um, fitness concepts and, and concepts, and then moving into you know some of the more advanced things also. So, um, let me see what else we have for questions here. Just a minute. Okay. Do the kickboxing gloves come in smaller size for elementary fifth grade? Um, question is that they would love it. Um, the kickboxing gloves are designed for um, school-aged kids, whether it's um, upper elementary and beyond. I don't know, Maria, if you have any sp any experience with that, but I think that's uh, more of a, a gopher question. But feel free to weigh in if you do. Yeah, I, I think it is a gopher question. The, what you're seeing on this last slide, if you look to the far right there, that that's the kickboxing pack. And, and gloves are probably designed for middle school and up. I think they would be a little big. However, I know in the performance catalog from Gopher, you guys did at one time sell the neoprene um, gloves that look like mittens almost. They're soft, sure. and those would fit elementary school. But the ones that you could I think are a little bit too big, yep. but I think it's something that you guys could could find for them. And another question: Have you done the kickboxing circuit um, with the uh, with pads that are held without the gloves for the younger kids at all? Yes, uh, the big large pads that you see there for the kickboxing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would start out maybe using those and just have one student hold it up, or even yep. the teacher can hold it up and just have them hit that big platform first. Yeah, that's a great idea. Good. All right. Um, let's see. Let's read, go through a couple more of these questions here. Okay. Um, question, are the cards in English and Spanish? At this time, they are only in English. Um, and then a question about how to keep the equipment sanitized. Um, I think you touched on that a little bit. Do you want to t talk a little bit about the gloves and the sanitation and, and how you do that? 
Mm -hmm. After each class, I have a bunch of those disinfectant wipes that I have out, and as the students are, are wrapping up and cleaning up, they just come over, grab one, they wipe down their gloves before they turn them in. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and you do that inside, inside and out? Inside and out, yep. Okay, okay. I just have them wipe on the inside. Um, question for you, Maria. How do you incorporate this into a full curriculum? Um, the the question the person asking the question said, I see you run this five to six times per semester. Do you take a break from yoga for a day to run this circuit, or how do you how do you incorporate it into a full curriculum? Okay, well the the course I teach is complete fitness, so I do a just a gamut of all different kinds of fitness activities. So I'll do. Um, you know, medicine ball work one day, I'll do stability ball work, I'll do kickboxing, I'll do yoga, Pilates, um, parkour, but these circuits, and then I do lots of different circuits, and so this would be, each one of these I do about four or five times, so uh, okay. four times, four, 16 times throughout the semester I would be doing this, okay. but I do not do these as a unit, like a whole week of this, I think the yep. kids would get bored. Okay. Great. Well, that is it for our question. Um, so again, I want to thank everybody for joining us. We will be having uh, these webinar sessions ongoing throughout the school year, one per month. So keep an eye out for more to come. Thank you very much, Maria. We certainly appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.